Hey everyone! Let's take a look at the differences between fetching data using the async data hook and using the fetch hook. So in our documentation, we have a page under features and it's called data fetching. And you can basically read all about it here, but let me show you as well. So in our application, I have a page called fetch and a page called async data. So let's just look quickly at the differences between them. They're pretty much very similar. The only main difference, as you can see here, when we're fetching using fetch, what we need to do is use this dot mountains, we're fetching our mountains, and have our data property here. So we need to put in the data property here. Now at async data, we don't need to define the data property. It just gets merged with your data. So you don't need to define anything and you can just directly use the const of mountains. So I've put the API just separately on both cases, just to kind of, um, just to kind of see it a little bit better. And we're using Axios in both examples. So we're literally just um, in async data and passing the Axios in here so I can use it directly. And with fetch, I don't have access to the context. So I need to use this. So what are our main differences, right? They look pretty similar as you can see. Well, with fetch, I can use a fetch state of pending. So I can do an automatic loading before the actual uh, content gets rendered. And I can also then check if there's an error directly uh, using fetch state.error. With async data, I've actually got to create a try and catch block in order to catch that error. But other than that, again, it's pretty much the same. So I've put in a error here because I want to like concentrate on the errors. So when I've put in an error on these APIs, let's have a look at how that works now in the application. So I go to my async data page and it's going to basically get that data and print out that error component. So that's pretty cool. Okay, great. And with fetch, it's going to first give me that loading. Did you see that? It kind of gave me that loading first and then it tried to fetch and gave me that error. So yeah, that's pretty good, but it's kind of loading. I've got an error. Depends on if you want that loading message or not. But again, they're pretty similar. Now the difference is with async data, um, for example, maybe I don't want to show that actual page. You know, if there's an error in the page, I don't want them to see this error component, right? I just want to see the error page. And I can do that in async data because I've got access to the context. I can just put in redirect. And then instead of returning the error, I can just redirect the user to the error page. So now with the async data one, let's have a look how that works. Let me just go back here, click on async data, and I get that beautiful error page that I created earlier. So that's really, really nice. And it goes direct to the error page. Oh, I really like that. Okay, um, how would I do that in fetch? So what's happening here is with async data, we're able to redirect the user because async data, everything happens before the page is created. So that means before that page is created, I've found an error and I can redirect you. Now with fetch, with the fetch hook, we can't do that because the fetch hook is done after that page is created. So I've already, I'm already on the page. I can't say, oh, now there's an error, go back to the error page. I can't do that. So um, there are a couple of ways around it and I'm gonna show you uh, one little way, for example, what we could do is instead of showing this um, error alert, I've actually just created an error component. And I'm just gonna show you how that works. It's just, I'm just gonna load the error page and I'm just gonna remove the back button and the, um, and I'll move that text color red. We don't want red text anymore. There we go. And we should have those styles, lovely. Okay, so now, I might need to remove more styles. We'll check in a minute. Let's have a look now using fetch. And yeah, I need to remove those styles, but I got that same kind of, you know, that same kind of way of doing things, right? So there we go, that's beautiful. So I'm kind of getting that 404 page, but as you can see, I am getting that loading first, right? It's gonna load and then it's gonna do that. Now I could, you know, try and just remove that loading. I don't want to show pending, so. Uh, and then I'll just remove the V else and just have a V if, if there's an error. So I don't want pending anymore. And now I go back to the home page. I click on my fetch and it gives me that page. And then it gives me that error. Did you see that? 
So that's why the loading is kind of good because otherwise I'm gonna get that page and you know then get that error. So I'd have to kind of remove um, everything. Yeah, and this is like using the VLs. VLs, I'm getting this. So it's gonna, it's gonna print out what's in here uh, until I get that error unless I use that pending. So that's kind of a little bit different, right? With async data, I'm getting straight to that error page and here I'm getting a little bit of that page or a loading message and then the error. Um, basically, yeah, it's a little bit easier to work with async data when you wanna work with error pages. Um, and one of the main things, I mean, async data is meant for pages, right? It's built for pages. You cannot use it in components and uh, fetch is used for components. It's built for components, but you can use it on your pages as well. But the great thing about Fetch is that you can use it anywhere in your application. Async data can only be used on pages. So that's something to keep in mind as well. What I would say is it's really great to use the um, to use the Fetch when it doesn't really matter if some part of your page is in Fetch and you've got a little warning or it's not shown. But if your whole page is dependent on that and you, you really need that data, um, then in my opinion, it's much better to use async data because you go direct to that error page. It's much easier to set up. And they are the main differences between async data and fetch. Uh, I hope that makes it a little bit easier. And don't forget, we have documentation that explains it and goes through it all. And thank you very much. Enjoy.